name is Sam Fall, and I'm here at CNSE, College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering in Albany, New York. And uh, I'm going to be showing you about the wire bonding of this machine. Now, the first thing you'll want to do when you get a new chip, since we're reusing these dips, uh, they get a little corrosion on the surface of the contact pads around the edges and that can actually uh, be, a, be a problem for bonding to. So you just take the tweezers and I count over one, two, three, that's where I'm bonding to. You'll have to find what source voltage and uh, pads you want to bond to. But you just take the tweezers, the tips, and just scratch the surface. And it'll go back and forth. You want to scuff up and remove that little bit of corrosion. It doesn't take much, pretty light pressure. Also, I'm marking using a motion like this on the edge there that marks which pad I'm going to hit. So that way, I don't have to, when I'm under the microscope, I don't have to count pads. And I'm scratching back and forth the pad to scuff it up and remove that corrosion. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to mount it in the uh, base here. Cut it under the pad, Put the needle, and you'll have some uh, some dock dials here uh, on this one. At force, time, and power. Uh, force, I don't mess with much. Time, that one I actually like to uh, mess with a bit. And then power is the one that I uh, mess with the most. So and usually it's just a you know, just a little bit adjustment either way as you're going along. Once you, once you get dialed in, then you'll just be a little bit of adjustment as you're going from pad to pad. It can vary. And uh, I'll take back to while we're going about this, I'm going to show you how to thread the needle as well. So um, I'm going to switch over here for the clamp. This little guy right here, back here. I'm turning that off and you grab the wire. Now I've got the wire right here. So I'm showing you the whole process. It was threaded up. So I go over the little bar and then down and I'm going up between the clamp. The little, the little pads from the clamp. And now I'm between it. Now I turn the clamp on. Then you want to break the wire off. It breaks pretty easily. Just like that. So you just grab onto the wire and pull, and it will break. And you want to get it to the correct length. Um, think about the width of these tweezers longer than the needle. Than the, than the needle. And, and you're threading the needle itself. So the angle you want to come into the tip, the very tip. You know, just Imagine when you're when you're trying to thread thread it. Imagine you're taking your wire and you're hitting the very tip, so just like that. You hit that, and you want to be at about a 45 degree angle straight back, just like this. So that's basically what you're trying to do. You just move it in. You just keep going like this, and you'll hit from side to side. You'll know when you hit it by just your hand will jiggle a little and if you see the, the tip of the wire on the other side moving like it's got a fulcrum like that then you know you've gotten to the bolt and you let go of the wire with the tweezers so, and also you notice I'm using any stabilization you want, you want to use as much stabilization for your tweezers so I'm resting my hand up against there I'm doing it like this two-handed. That way, my tweezers are very stable. Now, next part. Once you've threaded it through, you just take the tip of your tweezers and you brush back the tip. And it's just a little bend. That way, when you take the clamp off, which is the next step, 
there can be some spring wire and sometimes it'll pull out. So with that little bend it won't pull out. Then you grab onto that and you pull through the wire until you've got a clean section because the wire damages pretty easy. A clean section. And then you grab on and you pull straight down and that's perfect. So once you've done all of that, I kind of do my own setup. Um, you got to plan out your flight. So you got to know your starting pad, your ending pad, and you want to go straight back to it. So you want to, uh, the way I do it is I pull all the way forward till this pad is under the needle and my controller, which is this guy right here, controller is all the way down towards me. That way when I push the controller up to line up this pad, I know that I have enough travel to go between the two pads without having to manually move the base there, which is difficult. So, you know, I've lined up, I know roughly on the chip where the feature is that I want to hit, and I can see my pads, I'm lining it up in a straight line right there, so it's a rough alignment. Now, I go in, so I line it up right there, this pad here, and now I'm moving back to this pad here, so that way the needle's over that. So, now let me explain one thing. This is actually the, the cleverest little trick that I have to, to show you. You always going to want to keep the, uh, the wire below, or at least not much more than just a hair's width above. Uh, the level of the surface of the chip. So the way I was explaining to you, basically, if you if there's any chance you think you could just about reach down and go like that and pull the wire up with your fingers, that's way too much. What I like to see is maybe just a, a slight. If you can just see a slight, slightly, then maybe that's all right. But ideally, completely below the, the, the level of the chip. To do that, you have to get really creative because you've got to know how high up you want to arc it and pay attention to the tent, the bend that you're putting into the wire as you're arcing and manipulating the wire. It's all about the bend. The tension you build into the wire will determine its final state, if that makes sense. So what I like to do is I first go down like this. And that, that's my first contact. Then I go to the second. Now, this is where this has always been the trick part. If you just go down and, and bond, you're going to get laying across your surface of your chip. That's bad. Particularly right in this area. The wire will be you know, laying across any features here. That's bad. The way you can get it to do a bump up, so the wire bumps up off the chip and then goes over. The way you get that bend, it's, this is this is important. It's really, really, I'm pretty pleased with it that I was able to figure out. Uh, you go up, you land. You can go up as high as you think you need to, as circumstances, but land on the pad that you want to hit. Put your tip down, but don't bond. What you're doing by that is you're put building in since the wire is coming in at a 45 degree angle. By landing, you're actually putting a bend in the wire at that point. You then pick up, move just a little bit further back, land again, and then pick up, move back. Don't don't tip, pick your tip up very high. Move back to your original pad, what you want to hit, and and bond. If you do that, then the wire will bump up and then continue cleanly across the top of the chip without hitting any features that will be load as close to the chip as possible. So that's that's my big tip for how to, uh, to bond with this. Uh, some other things, uh, you can in a pinch, uh, if the wire's too long, if it's arcing up too high, you can take your tip and you can just push down on this bit 
part of the bend, push down, and you can take up some slack by putting another little bend. It's a bit risky, but uh, often works. Um, another tip that you can use is to use your needle, feed some wire out, push down, and that will create, it'll bend the wire straight, so you got basically a hook. And if you need to try to snag your wire and lift it up in a spot or manipulate, that can, uh, that little hook can help. So, other than, oh, and one other thing. Uh, when you're placing your chips on these dips, try to identify the features that you want to hit and put them through those contacts in the center of your dip when you uh, glue it in. That way, you have the same distance from side to side. The harder, the longer the lot, the uh, the distance you have to traverse, the harder it will be. Um, oh, another tip. If you if it's really ugly and you know there's no no room to be off to the side, you, you have to hit a really hard pad point to point. Another trick you can use is go from one pad to another unused pad and then to another then to your pad. Or let it bounce from one to another to another and then to your point. So you can do that. As long as they're unused, then it won't matter. 